from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live. This is the Cube Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a single noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. Show my co-host this segment, Jeff Frick, General Manager of the Cube Operations. We are here live in Las Vegas for Splunk.conference 2015. Hashtag SplunkConf. Our next guest to help us break it all down is IT analyst, research director, Alice, Alice Woodward. Welcome to the Cube. Thanks very much, John. Thanks for coming down. So IDC, obviously International Data Corp has all the numbers and I know you're, you know, we talk, you're fried, numbers are all over the place. It's hard to size this market. Sure. But IDC, obviously, research firm, um, one of the best in the world um, to have all the data. What's going on? What's your analysis of Splunk? I mean, obviously, can they make it? I mean, obviously, global footprint now, global reach, you're sure. on the international side, but you cover predictive analytics globally, uh -huh. so you got your yeah. view of the analytics landscape. What sure. does their announcement, announcements today, mainly ITSI, mean? Yeah for them in the market? Is it just a, uh, hey, we're here, are they entering new markets? What's your take? How do you break it down? I think Splunk have done a phenomenal job in the way they built the company and expanded. Um, they did this great kind of cautious expansion. Um, they've, they've got free trials and downloads and kind of viral spread very much uh, kind of sorted. So the expansion was driven internationally by downloads from the cloud, free trials, people downloading the software. Then they followed where their customers were in terms of international expansion. So they were able to kind of optimize that and do that very efficiently. So yeah, they have this great international footprint. Now, as a business analytics analyst, I was really interested to hear the business analytics announcement. And there kind of was one, like Snehal uh, said, business analytics, here are some use cases we've identified business process operations, customer experience, yeah. digital marketing. Um, but it seems the stage that they're at is, they're being currently led by their customers. You know, customers take Splunk, as you know, because you've been talking to them all day. Yeah. Uh, they take Splunk and they do various different things with it. And then Splunk's job is to kind of take the most popular things and productize those, build them and into the product. they're still a product company. They're still sure, doing, exactly, yeah. I mean, they're not just a solutions cobble together solutions, they actually still a lot more work to do on the product front. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, they, they have said they, they're not a services company, they're not a you know a consulting firm. They're gonna build the product and let partners take it uh, take it in terms of, of consulting. So um, so yeah I, I guess the actual analytics the business analytics piece that they have is all, today it was more of a, a statement of intent really, it wasn't really something that they have, but what I found was interesting is in a range of the other announcements, they have analytics underpinning each of those, so in security they talked about the um, user behavior analytics based on the Casida acquisition, which is, is really exciting. There's more analytics in uh, the security side, um, and then of course there's the IT SI as well, which is, uh, and so not only the advanced and predictive in terms of the user behavior analytics and the, the machine learning app, but also a lot more kind of general BI and visualization, a focus on putting visualization into the user experience and making it something that's nice to look at for, so you've got your you know traditional IT Splunk users that you know have contests with the queries and all, yeah, yeah. all this sort of they're thing. getting they're, down and dirty in the boiler room. Exactly, yeah. they're uh, you know they're <laughs> hacking and putting it on T-shirts and all this kind of good stuff. But you've also got new users to Splunk who perhaps want it made a little bit easy. And you, I, I think what they're going to start to do is start to look at the business user and start to to be able to present Splunk to the business users and say, well, look, here's the value that this stuff provides and you know IT log data is disgusting to yeah. look at it's just horrible yeah. it just kind of they won that sends market. a chill down the back yeah, like to look at the raw data so they've, to won, look at, they've won the data exhaust yeah, yeah. market <laughs> absolutely absolutely and you know getting the data in is um, is something they're really good at but now of course it's about what can you get out of it yeah, I mean splunking is a verb time. now people say hey let's yeah, splunking yeah. your data yeah. uh, well let's talk about let's talk about a couple things I want to get your take on um, as an analyst let's, let's analyze and criticize and um, and give them credit and, and look at look at their business. Ecosystem, I want to get your comments on their ecosystem. 
on a global basis, we can comment on that. And two, they're in every market. They have tentacles, as you said. Mm -hmm. they're, they're customer driven, so that means yeah. they're they're getting pulled into all these different IoT. They're in IT, yeah. uh, you know, going up up in terms of up market in terms of analytics. Sure. You know, the little tableau bumping into these all these yeah, different yeah. companies. So. Is there a focus problem? Is this just a natural? Or are they undervalued? I mean, all this stuff is interesting. I think because they've done such a great job of marketing, you can see them as kind of omnipresent. But um, don't forget, this is because they're kind of drawn there by their customers. And you know, having a couple of customers doing IoT analytics with Splunk is not being the IoT analytics market leader. Although actually, that's that's in quite an early stage, so you could probably yeah, they could build argue on that it. a little they bit. They a nice position. Exactly. But for example, digital marketing analytics, there are a lot of big heavy hitters in there because all of the you know you've got Marketo, you've got Adobe, you've got yeah. all those folks that provide the platform also providing the analytics on top and they own the underlying data so they're in a, a kind of great position to put the analytics on top so some of the, but I given think, that market they can just bolt in but not going to compete head to head because it's yeah. a but in other markets it's a green field for them so it's interesting I think the green fields they've got a really good chance but I also think they don't address the business user yet in the very successful way that they address the IT user and uh, there was a, a panel today Splunk kindly put on a panel with some of the, the management and the executives for the analysts to kind of quiz them a little bit and there's a bit of a joke about oh well for the business users we'll have different t-shirts <laughs> you know it's just you know it's yeah you know, it's IT you know geeky they've, crowd they've done a fabulous job with this market but the business the business user is, is kind of a different beast apart from anything it's very fragmented communities you know you've got marketing people you've got some people who are very metric and data driven you've got people who are kind of more creative and you've got all the different industries have different kind of legacies and you know retailers pride themselves very much on gut feel for example so you have to kind of lure them in with, so you have your work cut data. out for you sizing the market what market oh, are we yeah. sizing <laughs> you're slicing this market you're blowing up this market it's there in a lot of places so the question that we, we were talking about earlier on on our kickoff segment kind of on, on our editorial conversation was how tall can Splunk be meaning they're the grown-ups they're one of the grown-ups at the table they're probably like, you know they're kind of acting like a startup there they're one of the big hitters yeah, yeah, absolutely. so how big can their team be I mean obviously they're looking at IT I think they could be explosive so there's a lot of speculation that they could be big but yet 70% of their business is from recurring IT guys and 20% 30% roughly is coming from new business so they really got to get those new products yeah, yeah, on the a, market what's your take question. on that I think um, I think, as you, you mentioned, the Greenfield, and I think that's a great point. I think the Greenfield is where these guys are really going to do well. Um, we've been looking in, um, in my European work at big data for IoT, and we reached out to a few of the vendors. It's a very early stage piece of research. And we asked them, can we talk to you about big data and IoT? And it was really interesting. Um, some of them said, yep, sure, it's one guy who covers both. And others said, sorry, do you want big data or do you want IoT? which you want and they don't have a data focused approach to it at all they have a very operational approach they're talking about sensors and connections more, but more they're machine, not really like physical talking, plant exactly but they're not talking about analytics whereas some companies say well well data is where it is and okay i'm biased i've been in business analytics a long time you know it's it's really great to be in it now it's cool by the way because i was in it for a long time when it wasn't very cool and now we just, we're cool we kind of sat in the corner wearing boring t-shirts now you're on the cube <laughs> exactly oh, i know now you're on <laughs> the cube yeah, we'll start talking about bacon <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i think i think perhaps um iot analytics is somewhere where they could really where they could really shine because um you know organizations have got these new projects coming in and it's the it guys where they'll go yeah. to say how can we deal with all we've this heard data. that we've the heard marketing that. side and the customer experience they have more challenges there because they have a lot more competition. There's a lot of noise and competition, and the solutions are always moving and changing, yet there's an easy button need on the IoT side. There's no easy button. No, no, absolutely. As it's they say, a, been it's a around. complex thing, and that's where I think Splunk's strategy of letting the customers take it and run with it, which is, t which is such a BI thing. You yeah. know, to put the platform out there, to let the customers do what they need, to always have this constant kind of trial and error process, and then, but then to follow the customers and say, okay, we see what you're trying to do, let's support it and productize. That's a very BI thing, but that's what that's what Splunk does, and I think, as far as I know, it's the only kind of IT user-focused company that really works in that way. So that's that key strength of theirs, I think, which is, is what will really bring them into these new use cases. Alice, you raised an interesting point talking about the old BI way, which was all the big, the big data. Have a sip of coffee. You've been going nonstop. <laughs> um, 
it was the big BI guys, it was the PhDs, it was the data modelers, but now we've seen kind of half of the step of the democratization of the data now with the IT guys who can do big query, big queries, and now that's why it's getting cool. But to your point, to take it to the next level, to the business unit is a, is a whole nother step. The other thing you just said is, is if the application owns the data, then you've got a one-up because you've got the application and the data as opposed to bringing an analytics tool in on top of that. So it really sets up an interesting scenario for IoT because there isn't really an established player that either owns the applications that those data are going to kick, that those sensors are going to kick off, or that data flow because it's really kind of a new data flow. So how do you think that's going to to shake out? Is it going to be an incumbent that owns the application that's going to own within that specific space, or you know, like GE that's you know already heavy into power or whatever, or is it going to be some of these other tools that have the ability to sit on not only a data flow, but also now to bring in disparate data, so you're going to get stuff that you wouldn't get if you were just so singularly focused. It's a really, really great question, and I don't really have an answer, but it's a great, it's really a great one to consider. I guess it depends how this market plays out, and also because it's going to be vertically, as we mentioned, it's going to be vertically fragmented as well, because all the use cases are separate, so you'll get, you know, the connected car behaving in one way, and the kind of, you know, plant manufacturing behaving in another way. I guess in so, so in some of those verticals, you'll probably have an application provider that will step up and get the IoT and the analytics sorted, whereas in other places it will be a little bit more open. But yeah, it's um, I guess it really it, it depends. It very much depends on those particular application providers, right. as you said. Now then, the question is, and I really cannot, I don't have a view on this at all. It's it's a question is. You know, there's, there's always this kind of dichotomy between the application focus and the, the BI focus. Splunk's great success is to bring in data from disparate sources and show it all in one. Right. And as soon as you have multiple suppliers, that's what you need to do. But in many, not in a whole organization, but certainly in many departments, you may have all your data in SAP pretty much. So you can do all your analytics directly out of SAP and you don't need to worry about bringing sources together. And it almost it depends how mature you are in terms of of going enterprise-wide and bringing every single thing in. Right. So then the question would be, at what stage do organizations want to do other stuff with the IoT analytics? And it may be that because the scale of IoT is so great that they that they don't want to, that everything around that data has to be done right. in that place. But that also will dictate, well, which suppliers will, which suppliers will win out. Because if you need to bring data in from other sources, generally application providers, in my view, have a bit of a blind spot to that. You know, they say, oh, well, of course, they run on this and we own the data and everything's wonderful, which it is until you've got different applications and right. then you need to bring them into a, to a separate layer. So it very much depends how the applications It's kind of the age old application platform battle. Yeah, and yeah. as we know, all successful platforms start as an application because yeah. nobody's buying new platforms yeah, for anything. Yeah. But at some point, they start to look more like a platform, yeah. build out an ecosystem and start to be able to draw from disparate application is different, different yeah, data sources. absolutely, and that isn't changing. If anything, with big data, it's getting even more, it's, it, the battle is almost kind of accelerating, you know, right. because the, the pressure for value, particularly in Europe, where I focus, the pressure to deliver value and to cut costs and to prove what you've done right is, is really important. But then also in the big data world, we have all these different data management sources, you know, you have NoSQL and Hadoop and Cassandra, all this different stuff. So you have this, this need to bring things together into a platform even more. Are you following the social cloud predictive analytics space? Because in the US, Oracle, Salesforce, there's a whole sea change of how data is being used for, we call it social sales, but yeah. in general, you're seeing a lot more um, marketing cloud like yeah. software. What following? do you mean, like bringing bringing in kind of social activity yeah, into I mean, marketing? They all seem to be like marketing up. oriented, not a lot of technology, but I mean, but there seems to be a cloud movement where there's a cloud concept, an Amazon kind of product for standing up infrastructure for predictive analytics. Mm. Is there what's your take on that? Because we see a need out there for for people just to stand up something fast without buying software. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's, what's, the, what's your take on that I market? think for a while, with, with traditional BI, when the cloud kind of first hit, and you know, cloud was this fabulous platform for CRM to get adoption started very easily. 
for traditional BI, it actually didn't really solve any problems. You know, you still had to integrate data. It didn't particularly help you with end user adoption. But I think now we're in more of a big data world and a predictive analytics world. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's really important because you always have this need to, to try before you buy, prototype it, see if there's any if there's any value in there. And the longer you've been in analytics, the more you kind of <laughs> respect the value that people manage to dig out of data. Because unlike what the storage folks would have you believe, all data does not have value. Or some of it has so little value that it's so hard to get at that in effect it has it has no value. So yeah, absolutely. The need to, to spin up quickly, try low risk um, is, yeah, it's really important. Final comment on Splunk. What's your report? If you have to file your report here on theCUBE for the folks watching, What's going, what, what is this day all about for these guys? Is it an inflection point, is it a me too? Are they moving the ball down the field? Are they scoring a goal with this thing? What, they scoring a touchdown? What's, what is the deal with Splunk right now in this announcement? Are you happy with it, you give it a thumbs up? What's your analysis? I'm really glad you made that question long, so I could have a little think. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here. <laughs> Very kind, <laughs> kind interviews. Um, Splunk manages to be kind of geek heaven and also a marketing powerhouse. We've seen some phenomenal marketing today. Every announcement in the keynote was followed by a customer video of an organization using Splunk successfully. So yeah, um, everything I've seen, it's it's, it's doing- It's data driven. It's data driven it's for showing sure. The proof it's, doing, it's doing very well. It's got room to grow in business analytics for sure. There's a lot more potential out there. But as they go beyond their core user, perhaps they will grow a little more, a little more slowly. But in general, um, they got to push the envelope, get into some new territory, take some adjacent absolutely, markets. Absolutely. But then um, it's a great time for technology. You know, there's yeah. more out there. There's more opportunity and more challenge than we can really handle with How technology. How tall can they grow? Exactly, and the challenge is just, uh, you know, yeah. the um, it's it's almost limitless what, what's possible, so um, best of luck to them. Thanks for sharing your insight in the Pleasure data you, here on theCUBE with the audience. This is theCUBE. How tall can Splunk be? That's the question. Looking good off the tee, as they say in golf. Look, Splunk is continuing to uh, surprise the, the analysts with better and better performance, and uh, certainly the products are, are out there. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back here live in Vegas after this short break.